Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Pada sidang akhbar ini Band Negara Malaysia akan menyampaikan taklimat mengenai Prestasi Pertubuhan Ekonomi Negara Pada suku tahun pertama tahun 2019 Taklimat ini juga merangkumi perkembangan monetari dan kewangan di Malaysia Taklimat ini turut dihadiri oleh Ketua Perangkawan Malaysia Datuk Seri Dr. Muhammad Uzi Mahidin dan Jabatan Perangkaan Malaysia adalah agensi rasmi yang mengumpul dan menerbit statistik KDNK negara. Please allow me to continue the presentation in English. In the first quarter of 2019, the global economy continued to expand. With GDP outturns in several major economies were stronger than expected, underlying conditions suggest growth will be slower going forward. In the regional economies, growth was weighed by a contraction in exports, reflecting overall weaknesses in global demand and a sharp deterioration in Chinese exports to the US, particularly in the segments affected by higher tariffs. Looking ahead, weaker global production, heightened policy uncertainty and deteriorating sentiment point to a continued slow pace of economic activity. The Malaysian economy registered a commendable growth of 4.5% in the first quarter of 2019, despite the challenging environment. The growth performance was supported by continued expansion in domestic demand and a recovery in agricultural production. However, the weakness in overall investment activity weighed down on growth. Before I delve further into the Malaysian economy, I should mention that the Department of Statistics Malaysia has recently rebased the GDP in constant terms to 2015 prices from 2010 prices. The rebasing exercise reflects the enhancement of data sources and coverage, as well as methodological improvements in line with international standards for statistical compilation. Hence, all figures in this presentation will use the new 2015 base prices. I wish to congratulate Tawazam in successfully conducting this rebase. If there are questions on this, um, Dr. Sri Uze would be pleased to answer any questions on this rebasing exercise. Growth was supported by a strong recovery in the agriculture sector, which grew by 5.6%, as opposed to a contraction of 0.1% in the fourth quarter of last year. This is driven mainly by the significant improvements in the production of crude palm oil and natural rubber. Crude palm oil production rebounded strongly during the quarter due to the recovery in oil palm yields. Natural rubber production also recovered significantly during the quarter as improvements in rubber prices spurred more rubber tapping activities. The services and manufacturing sectors remain the key drivers of growth. The services sector remains supported by the wholesale and retail trade subsector, supported by firm household spending. Growth in the manufacturing sector was supported by the recovery in domestic production of palm oil. However, this was offset by the slowdown in the electronics and electrical cluster amid slower global growth. On the demand side, growth was supported by the continued expansion in private sector spending particularly private consumption. However, public investment declined following the near completion of several large projects. On the external front, net exports contributed positively to growth due mainly to a contraction in imports in tandem with the weaker external demand and slower investment activity. Private consumption growth moderated towards its long-term trend but remain firm at 7.6%. As expected, household spending normalized following three consecutive quarters of robust growth due mainly to the tax holiday boost last year. Income and employment, the key driver of consumption, continued to expand and remain supportive of overall spending during the quarter. Looking ahead, 
private consumption is expected to normalize further but will remain firm given stable labor market conditions and supportive government measures. Private investment grew at a slower pace of 0.4% in first quarter this year. The overall in performance was weighed down by weak machinery and equipment investment amid softening external demand and moderating business sentiment. Looking ahead, while investment activity is likely to receive some support from ongoing multi-year projects, the growth trend could be below the long-term average. Such underperformance underscores the urgency to relook at policies to invigorate public-private investment, including to review investment incentives and reduce inefficiencies. On the external front, both exports and imports contracted by 0.7% and 2.5% respectively due to weaker external demand. The weaker export performance during the quarter was not unique to Malaysia as other regional economies including Korea, Chinese Taipei and Singapore also experienced a decline in export growth. Nonetheless, as the moderation in gross imports outpaced gross, gross exports, the trade balance widened to 36.9 billion ringgit. We project a gradual improvement in the near future driven by continued, albeit moderate demand from major trade partners, demand for growing niche product segments where Malaysia is part of the global value chain such as the automotive, medical and aerospace industries and continued recovery in commodity production. Our baseline assessment has already taken into account the implementation of 25% tariff by the US on 200 US dollar billion worth of PR Chinese import in May 2019 and the retaliation by China that was announced recently. The current account surplus of the balance of payments widened to 16.4 billion ringgit or 4.7% of GNI in the first quarter of 2019, the highest since first quarter of 2014. This was on account of higher goods surplus and smaller services and income deficit. The goods surplus expanded to 33.8 billion ringgit amid lower imports of production inputs and capital goods. This had offset lower exports in both manufacturing and commodity sectors. Looking ahead, the current account is expected to remain in surplus, driven by continued goods surplus amid deficits in the services and income accounts. For the full year of 2019, the current account balance is expected to remain at 1.5 to 2.5% of GNI. FDI improved in first quarter 2019, regist registering larger inflows of 21.7 billion ringgit compared to 12.9 billion ringgit in the fourth quarter last year. The higher FDI partly reflected the acquisition of shares by a Japanese investor in a domestic private healthcare company and a new joint venture in the oil and gas sector. FDI was channeled mainly into the services sector, particularly the healthcare subsector and the manufacturing sector. Advanced economies remain important contributors of FDI during the quarter. These flows are a reflection of Malaysia's continued attractiveness as an investment destination. Let me now move on to some highlights in monetary and financial developments during the quarter. Headline inflation increased to 0.2% in March 2019. This was mainly due to the higher global oil price which led to increased domestic fuel prices during the month. While headline inflation could remain low in the immediate term due to policy measures, it will increase from the current rate as the impact of changes in consumption tax begins, begins to lapse. For the year as a whole, average headline inflation is ex expected to be broadly stable compared to 2018. The ringgit appreciated by 1.4% against the US dollar in the first quarter of the year driven mainly by non-resident portfolio inflows. During the quarter, investor sentiments 
improved following several positive global developments. These included the Fed signaling for a pause in its interest rate hikes for 2019 and increasing optimism over global trade negotiations. As a result, emerging market financial assets, particularly bonds, experienced increased demand, which led to inflows to regional bond markets, including Malaysia. However, in light of the more recent global developments, the ringgit, along with regional currencies, have experienced some volatility and depreciation pressure. This is likely to continue in the near term amid concerns over the global growth outlook. <coughs> Ongoing uncertainties surrounding global geopolitical and trade developments will also be key factors affecting the ringgit and other regional currencies. During the quarter, the portfolio investment account registered a net inflow of 2.1 billion ringgit. This was accounted mainly by non-resident inflows amounting to 13.5 billion ringgit as the Malaysian bond remained attractive and accessible. <coughs> Non-resident holdings of Malaysian government bonds remain relatively stable at around 22.8% or 169.4 billion ringgit as at end March this year. Almost 50% of the non-resident holdings comprise of central banks, governments and pension funds. In April, we observe a reversal of the first quarter inflows from the government bond market amounting to about 7.1 billion ringgit, mainly attributed to non-resident financial institutions and short-term investors. This is in part due to negative headlines such as news on potential exclusion of Malaysian bond from the FTSE World Global Bond Index or WIGB and Norway's plan to drop emerging market bonds from its benchmark which have affected market sentiments. Diverse investor participation High liquidity and debt are key features of the Malaysian market. The bank remains committed in ensuring continuous development and stability of the Malaysian financial market. We are pleased to announce the following initiatives as they are key to further enhance market accessibility. First, recognizing the important role of the repo market in secondary market trading activities, the bank will further enhance the repo facility to facilitate market makers in quoting of the run bonds. A review of the repo guideline will be undertaken to allow for greater flexibility, which amongst others include lengthening the repo tenure beyond one year. Two, to further develop an effective hedging platform for investors, the bank, in collaboration with Securities Commission, Bursa Malaysia and key market players will further enhance the delivery mechanism for MGS future settlement. Three, to provide greater access to the dynamic hedging program, institutional investors are able to undertake dynamic hedging via trust banks and global custodians. Four, where there is interest, greater flexibility may be accorded to registered institutional investors under the dynamic hedging program to manage the FX risk beyond the current 25% threshold of underlying assets upon approval by Benagara Malaysia. Fifth, FX trade and documentation process will be simplified to ease investors' accessibility to onshore FX market. A standard documentation guide for FX transactions will be circulated via the Association of Banks Malaysia. And six, the appointed overseas office framework will facilitate greater access to the Malaysian financial market by enhancing the capacity to provide ringgit liquidity after the close of the local market. These initiatives will provide greater flexibility, accessibility and liquidity in the FX and bond market with increased participation in the dynamic hedging program. To date, the program has benefited 88 registered investors, managing a total of 30.8 billion US dollar in assets. The bank will continue to engage investors index providers, custodian banks, market participants and authorities so that accessibility and hedging needs are met. Financial stability was preserved in the first quarter of 2019. 
The financial system remained resilient while domestic financial markets continued to function in an orderly manner as confidence in the financial system was sustained. As at end March 2019, excess capital buffers of the banking system and insurance industry remain strong at 154 billion and 38.8 billion ringgit, respectively. Stress tests affirm financial institution resilience to severe macroeconomic and financial stock financial shocks at the system level. And banking system liquidity remains sufficient to uh, support inter intermediation. All banks maintain liquidity coverage ratio above the minimum 100% requirement. Total outstanding loan growth moderated during the quarter on account of slower pace in business loan expansion. The slower business growth reflected the subdued loan growth in real estate and construction sectors amid continued weakness in the property segment near completion of large-scale projects and smaller size of new projects. However, wholesale and retail trade, restaurants and hotels, and manufacturing sectors recorded strong lo lo loan growth, which was in line with continued strong expansion of economic activity in those sectors. The moder moderated loan growth reflected the lower aggregate demand. This was observed in the lower demand for loans with the lower level of business loan applications during the quarter. Annual growth of business loan applications has been in contraction since the third quarter of last year. Meanwhile, the growth of outstanding housing loans remain household loans remain broadly steady at 5%. Turning to monetary policy, as you are aware, the OPR was reduced at the last NPC meeting by 25 basis points to 3%. While the baseline projection remains for growth to be between 4.3 to 4.8% for 2019, the NPC is cognizant that there are risks to domestic growth given the considerable uncertainties and downside risks to the global environment. Despite the resilience of the domestic financial markets, cumulative outflows since last year have somewhat affected financial conditions. The NPC has observed some signs of tightening of financial conditions, including liquidity conditions and broad-based higher cost of funds. The reduction in the OPR is therefore a preemptive move aimed at preserving the degree of monetary accommodativeness to ensure that the monetary policy stance is supportive of sustainable growth and price stability. Malaysia's external debt is lower by 21.2 billion ringgit during the quarter and remains manageable given its currency and maturity profiles. The lower external debt largely reflects a net repayment of interbank borrowings given lower funding needs of several foreign banks, including those operating in Labuan International Business and Financial Center. More than half of external debt is skewed towards medium to long-term tenure, limiting rollover risk. About one-third of external debt is denominated in ringgit, which exempts it from valuation changes from the fluctuations in the ringgit exchange rate. The remaining foreign currency denominated external debt does not pose a material risk as it is subject to prudent liquidity management practices and hedging requirements. Looking ahead, we expect Malaysia's GDP growth to remain within the range of 4.3% to 4.8%, driven by private sector spending, capacity expansion in key industries and gradual recovery in commodity sector. This has been our baseline projection since March and remains to be the case. It is clear that downside risks remain in immediate horizon, stemming mainly from external factors. We will continue to monitor this risk and its implications on overall growth trajectory. The focus of monetary policy is to provide a conducive monetary environment for economic growth with price stability. Fiscal policy also has an important role in managing fluctuations within the economy. As such, timely, targeted and effective spending will be key in supporting the economy. While our fundamentals are strong with steady growth, low 
unemployment and current account surplus of the balance of payment, we require structural and institutional reforms to further strengthen the foundations of our economy. Some progress on this front are already underway and are indeed welcome developments. There remains, however, more complex issues which will inevitably require greater analysis and time to address. We have a huge task in improving our education, upskilling our workers, tackle over dependence on low-skilled labour and raise our productivity. These are areas Ben and Garam Malaysia have been highlighting in our publications over the years. With good policies in place, Malaysia can weather challenges that lies ahead and sustain our economic prosperity. This marks the end of my presentation. I, my team and I and Dr. Uh, Siri Uze and his team will be pleased to uh, answer any question or provide any clarification.